Can't tell you how great it is to have you stopping by. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It is April 4th. Now, we're going to do the same thing we do in all of our shows. We're going to focus in on some hot OTC and penny stocks. You do realize I am out there every single day for you, like a faithful dog, looking for stocks that have potential. And I'm doing this on every single market because all the markets have penny stocks. Penny stocks are nothing more than a stock that's under five bucks. Now, the good thing is, is I do most of my research at one site. Here, the otcmarkets.com website. True, it is set up for the OTC market, but they bring in a lot of information about the major exchange stocks. And what I really like about this site is it is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Folks, this is important. There is no other site that I'm aware of that updates every single OTC stock every single day. And if you're going out to Google to do your research on OTC stocks, I can promise you, you're wasting time and probably getting frustrated. So do me a favor, do yourself a favor, start your research here and see if it doesn't make a difference. All right, let's take a look at our OTC market now. Those are some low numbers. I'm not happy with any of them. Let's see if we can change them. No, no change at all. They are all low numbers. Our dollar volume should be near 2 billion. We're down at 1.2 and we keep getting closer to the one. Share volume, we need to be at 10 billion. We can barely hang on to five. Right now we're a wee bit over that at 5.8. And our trades, you know, 250,000 was our floor for a very long time. Now we've fallen under that and having a hard time just getting back up to it. So the market is not improving. All right, I've got some stocks I want to share with you. I did my hunting today and I found three interesting stocks that look like they all have potential to run. And I found these stocks looking at the charts. Interesting thing is all three of them have got different types of chart setups. Let me show you what I got. First penny stock we're going to take a look at is on the OTC. This is BOPO, ticker B-O-P-O, Biopower Operations Corps. Now, I did find this stock the same way I've been finding all of our stocks, by looking at the charts first. And she had a hot chart. Look at that, folks. This is beautiful. This is what I like to call the atypical breakout chart. This is the one that I look for the most often when you got that 200 day SMA coming down like a ski slope, hitting the valley and leveling out and right up underneath it, you got your price or it's already cutting through a dream of a setup. Well, when I saw this, I came over here crossing my fingers, hoping I was going to find a catalyst Well, she's only got one current filing and one current news press and both of them are about the same thing, our catalyst. So Bopo, she finished today at 19 cents with about 16% gains. Now the bad news is she's on the pink limited tier. Now we'll talk more about this, but what this means is she is late on one or more of her financial filings. And this is crucial. She's got to get those filings in in a timely manner or they will yank her off of the OTC market and toss her down to the expert market. Now that's not a delisting. It's more like a timeout. You can't buy or sell the shares while they're down there and they'll stay there until they get their financial filing put in. Once they're caught up, they'll come back onto the open market. Now, if you happen to be invested in that company, when they go down to the expert market, you're in limbo with them until they come out. We do have a delinquent SEC reporting badge here because they are late with some of their filings. And we've only got one of those two green ticks I'm always talking to you about. Transfer agent verified they've got, but they are missing the verified profile. Now, if you're going to be in an OTC stock for a long hold, you really want to see those two green ticks. They represent a lot of important validated information and you want as much validated information as you can get on an OTC stock long hold. But if you're just trading the stock for a quick turnover, don't worry about those too much. Now, the first thing I got to tell you about Bopo is she's not Bopo. She did file for a name change and a ticker change a while ago. It just hasn't come through yet. Their new name is Hi-Fi Core, and I'm going to presume their ticker is going to be HYFI, but I don't know that for fact. So what does the company do? Well, they are a U.S.-based fintech public company that has developed and owns innovative decentralized financing. They use a blockchain, blockchain technology called Hi-Fi. What they do is they help operations and projects get financing through the blockchain. 
We help companies get financing by buying stocks. They do it by selling tokens or promissory notes or bonds. So what was the relative volume around BOPO today? Whoa. Okay, it is a big jump. It's like 500% increase, but wow, talk about being under the radar. 40,000 shares a day, and today she launched with 214,000 shares. Share structure for BOPO, our outstanding share count, 45.8 million. We've got a few different numbers down here. I don't know which ones to trust. I couldn't actually find it in the financial, so I did go over to Google. We've got a couple numbers over here, 23 million, 23 million, 23 million. Hey, we've got agreement. So it looks like our float is 23 million, about 50% of the outstanding share count. The financials for BOPO. At the end of 2021, she had $175,000. That's not just hundreds, it's thousands. We gotta put three zeros behind any of the numbers back here. On the quarterly, they're making money regularly, roughly $200,000 a quarter, and it isn't costing them a cent to make that money. But as you can see, August was their last financial. They are missing November's and the first quarter for 2023. And jumping over here to their disclosures, you can see that that last one came in in August and we're waiting for the others. And these are 10 Qs. These are not disclosures, which is kind of strange on the pink, which is why I couldn't find the float. Then you've got this 8K. This came out March 22nd, the same day that the news came out, March 22nd. Biopower Operations launches structured finance and ESG project consultancy divisions. Current client contracts requesting over $10 billion in project funding. Biopower Operations today announced the launch of its structured finance division and its ESG project consultancy division. Our new structured finance division has three funding models. They work with the bond market. This capital is going to come from the bond market, and they typically work with projects from $100 million to $1 billion. They're also working with promissory notes. This money comes from insurance and pension funds, and their deals are typically the size of $10 million to $100 million. And the last one they got is their tokenized platform. The capital supplied here comes from accredited investors, and these deal sizes are from $1 million to $100 million. Now they tell us down here that coinciding with the launch of their new divisions, they are happy to announce that they have already got 12 clients which are contracted for $10 billion in project capital for green, environmental, and infrastructure related projects. The deals are at various stages of maturity with almost $1 billion in transactions already submitted for underwriting approval this month. We have developed a large pipeline of businesses from Southeast Asia as well as engagements in Central America, Canada, the United States, Europe, and select African nations. And we have a strong focus on India. We have established relationships in India through our partnership network and believe India is posed for substantial growth in its green economy. Folks, first off, India is the second most populated country in the world. So if you can hit something there, even a base hit is going to get you a lot of business. But look at how many countries they're in. Southeast Asia, Central America, Canada, United States, Europe. They are everywhere right now and they're just getting going, dealing with billions of dollars of business. Business. So I think things are going to change right about now. So now's the time for us to consider that chart. You want to see it? Come on, I'll share it with you. Taking a look at BOPO, we're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade. So can you. So this is Biopower's six-month, four-hour chart. This is their atypical breakout chart, right? We got a high back here in August of 24 cents and a low in December of three and a half cents. Off of this low bubble, she pushed herself up over that 50-day SMA, has been negotiating with it, and then all this volume came into the picture here. And even though it got thin right here, it did not stop the climb. She has been pushing through all of her SMAs and looks like she wants to continue on. Our technicals, our PPO and our MACD are very strong, both of them pushing up. Our RSI has just come out of the overbought and is currently at 66 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. 
So once she got over that 50-day SMA, she pushed herself hard for three days, hitting her high of 22 cents, and then she had a pullback. Now, I'm not considering this a fall. When you hit your head on the ceiling, what's the first thing you want to do? Pull your head back, right? So that's what I think has happened here because the price right now is 19 cents, which is the top of our red bar. That is on top of our nine-day SMA. Our technicals, well, our RSI has dropped a little bit. That is down to 60 right now. And our MACD looks like it's trying to come down, as is our PPO but she looks good on the chart. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. So there's our run. She hit her high, she pulled back, fell down to the 50 day SMA, bounced up. She has put herself on top of the nine, on top of the 20 and is sitting up here. That is good placement on the chart. This doesn't look bad at all. Our technicals, looks like she wants to start climbing again, folks. Our RSI is now up to 53 when it fell down to 39. Our MACD is starting to work to cross back over, and our PPO is just now starting to turn up. But everything on the chart looks good. Nothing looks hazardous here. So I like BOPO. I think this new deal dealing with billions of dollars is going to get people excited, especially since they haven't been doing anything for a while. So I keep my eye on BOPO at least for the next seven days to see what sort of volume comes in. You could get yourself a nice run here. Our next penny stock is also from the OTC. This is ticker DHCC Diamond Head Casino Core. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this company underperformed today. I honestly was expecting this stock to be near a dollar, twice what it is right now. Her charts, they're not a breakout chart. They're continuation. She started running yesterday when a filing came out that had some hot news in it. But she hasn't had news for like two, three years now. She has literally been dead in the water. Then all of a sudden this filing comes out and boom, the chart takes off. It was hot yesterday. It was hot today. And I think there is heat left over. So DHCC, she finished the day at 51 cents with just a little over 13% gains. She's on the pink tier. She is current. And she too has only got that transfer agent verified tick. She hasn't got the verified profile. We would like to see that. So what does DHCC do? Well, it's not like they've been doing anything for a long while, but they have had plans. I jumped into their most recent financial and this is what I found. The company's intent was and is to construct a casino resort and other amenities on the Diamond Head, Mississippi property, unilaterally or in conjunction with one or more joint venture partners. However, the company has been unable to date to obtain financing to move the project forward and or enter into a joint venture partnership. Due to its lack of financial resources, the company has been forced to explore other alternatives, including a sale of part or all of the property. But there has been a serious change of events and it all comes in that filing. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Whew, another super low one, my goodness. She was only doing about 8,000 shares a day and today she jumped to 110,000. Now these aren't big numbers, but look at the percentage gain. You're looking at about 1,200% uh, jump in volume. Share structure for the company. All right, our outstanding share count is 38.1 million. A variety of numbers here. So let's just jump on over to Google. And what do we find? 28.2, 26.9. Is that it? That's it. I only got two of them. So between 26 and 28 is our float. Not a bad float to deal with. Financials for DHCC. We have got nothing on the annual and we have nothing on the quarterly. The filing that came out today is a big deal because as I said, the company has just been dead for the last couple of years. You wouldn't even know management was there, but this filing has changed everything. So the filing came out on the third. Let's take a look at this filing. They tell us here that on March 31st, the company entered into a letter of intent with an unrelated third party. The letter of intent provides that the purchaser will purchase 4 million shares of common stock of the company at a purchase price 
of one dollar per share and they're gonna do this in two transactions that's why I'm expecting this price to be a dollar you just had somebody come in and buy four million shares four million dollars worth of this company after they've been dead in the water for two to three years at a dollar a share that's normally when you see the price get kicked up on top of that back on March 19th Weiss Asset Management LP increased their holdings by nearly doubling it, 117% increase. And they too own over $4 million worth of this company. And this has just happened in the last three weeks. So you've got two companies that have seriously bought into this company while it looks dead things aren't dead something's happening behind the scenes even though they haven't given us a news press or any information about what that is probably they're going to get this casino started to be built and i'm expecting this chart to move let's go take a look at this chart let's take a gander at dhcc this is a three-year one-week chart so every bar you see represents an entire week of trading now I told you this company was dead in the water for the last two to three years they've been doing absolutely nothing they have no business no operations they're not making any revenues and still look at that chart unbelievable yeah she has been rolling up and down but she's climbing she's on an incline look at that 200 day SMA speaking of that she's above it the entire time doing nothing pretty impressive actually Let's come on down to that six month, four hour view. So over the last three years, this is her high, 57 cents. She hit a low of 21 cents in December. And right now things are getting hot. That filing came out yesterday, brought in all this volume. She started a run at 30 cents, ran up here to 53 cents and has pulled back two cents. That's it. Our technicals are blazing right now. Literally, RSI is up at 75 on fire. MACD is pushing to the moon. Green bars are getting bigger and accumulating, and we got a perfect setup right here. My PPO, percentage price oscillator, and my ADX. This is trend continuation. This tells me when my trend is going to change. Whenever there's a bend, a change of direction, go straight up from this bend. You can see she was going straight and then started to climb every time there's a change in trend you get a bend well as long as this line is falling down and my ppo is going up that spread guaranteed your price is rising so right now the four hour chart looks hot looking at our 20 day one hour view so nothing was going on until that filing came out and then she caught fire got up on top of that 200 pushed up here to a high of 53 cents and has pulled back doesn't look like a fall to me. No, she hit her head, came down, bounced off the floor, the nine day SMA, and has come right back up. Our technicals say she is not falling. She's holding right now, and she's holding strong. We are still on fire. Looking at our five day, five minute. Oh, that is pretty. Nice, steady climb, floating on her nine day SMA, not even coming down to the 20 anytime in here. Hit that high, came down, bounced off her 20 and is pushed right back up on top of her nine this looks like it wants to continue our technicals say she is starting to recover right now they did weaken out with this drop but they're all coming back right now i like dhcc because people have put money into the company we've got two big investors that have just dropped what eight million dollars onto this company when they haven't done anything for three years something is happening behind the scenes and when that news press comes out and tells us what it is i bet you this thing explodes ah, and i forgot the most important thing remember they bought those four million shares at one dollar the price right now is 51 cents look whenever i see somebody come in and buy shares at an exaggerated price what normally happens is the price pushes right up underneath it so i don't know why the price didn't go there but i think there's a very good chance it could so as i just got done saying i'm expecting this stock to explode 
Oh boy, oh boy, I got ourselves another OTC penny stock here, which is on the pink limited tier. This is ticker ACX, Currency Power Corporation. Now this company's going through a lot of changes. First off, what I can see is that they are a shell company. They've got no revenues coming in. They really haven't got any assets to talk about. And back in September, they changed their name. They changed their ticker. They said they had a change of operations, though I can't tell what they were doing before that. And they went through a serious reverse split. And just the other day, something happened which caused the price to fall drastically, which I think is an easy remedy. So I'm thinking there could be some easy gains here. So AECX, she finished today just a little over 11 cents and almost 10% gains. She is on that pink limited tier, so we know that one or more of her financials are late, and we will take a look at that. And of all the stocks we looked at, this is the only one that's got both of those green ticks, so in that regard, she looks good. Now, as I said, she did change her name, her ticker, her operations, so none of this information is valid anymore. Looking at that news press that came out September 14th, they tell us along with this split, the company has changed its name from Via Technologies Inc. to Currency Power Corporation. We are now moving forward with projects that include all distributed energy resources. The company believes these renewables will be the basis of our energy generation. Wherever possible, we will blend other alternate generation sources that clearly show a path of utilizing carbon capture utilization and storage technologies. We believe Currency Power Corporation has a moral and ethical responsibility to our environment as well as to our shareholders. Well, they do to the shareholders. I'll give them that much. So what was the relative volume around AECX today? <laughs> Jeez. Oh my God, they've gotten smaller and smaller. We started off with 40,000 shares, dropped to 7,000 shares, and this company is doing an average of 232 shares a day. My God, and today she jumped big. Yes, yeah, she did, all the way up to 1.6 thousand. So you're looking at about 700% <laughs> increase. Share structure for the company. It is juicy. Ever since that reverse split, we have got an itty bitty, super duper, tiny minuscule float of 375,000 shares. It is correct, folks. They did a huge split. Down here, they tell us, if you come to dividends and splits and click that split button there, they'll give you information. September 14th, they did a one in 700 split. Now to show you the impact of this, originally they had 491 million shares. After the split, they were left with only 702,000. And we get that minuscule float of 375,000. Now folks, this is excellent. You can't find floats like this on the major exchanges because they got minimums. You got to have at least a million shares, but I don't know of any criteria like that on the OTC market. Now, AECX, she hasn't had a whole lot of volume here recently, but consider if she had a million shares selling a day. You've only got 375,000. So that means that all the shares on the market would have to sell three times over that is going to create a supply and demand issue. This is when you're going to get your hot runs. But you got to remember, as fast as it rises, it can fall too. But this is not the catalyst. No, this is just a juicy morsel. The catalyst is over here in the disclosures based on that pink limited information. It's a simple remedy, folks. They have just filed their annual report. Well, the only catch here is with an annual report, you got to put in an attorney letter. That's what you got to do and you're done. Well, they haven't done that. All they got to do is get an attorney letter in and this is going to change from pink limited to pink. Now the price fell because it went to pink limited. Just the other day, you can see right here, AECX, they dropped from pink current to pink limited and that's when the price fell. Well, as soon as this attorney letter comes into the picture, I believe that's going to go back to pink current and I expect the price to come right back as well. All right. Is there any news for the company? Let's see what we got over here. Uh, nothing since September and no, we've got no news at all. So all we got is this recovery chart to look at. So let's go take a look at it. 
Yeah, that's a six month, four hour chart for AECX. Not a lot of volume, not a lot of activity. She was real flat back here. This is her triple zero zone. I'm sure she's actually riding up and down through here, but it's all been squished real flat. Then right here, that's their reverse split going from triple zero six to 15 and a half cents. And believe it or not, after her reverse split, she climbed, adding about 30% onto it, up to 24 cents. She pulled back to 22 cents and she rolled that until she fell off of the pink current to pink limited and she fell down to 11 cents. Our technicals, look at this folks. Everything is pushing down and in the basement right now. People are not happy. We need to see that attorney letter come out. That'll bring the smile back. Jump into our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot to see really flat here at 23 cents had the bad news come out she fell and she's sitting down there right now and the only thing that looks like it's trying to recover is the rsi and that's at 22 and the basement floor is at 30. that five day five minute probably not going to see much there at all no there's just not enough volume we got two days here she was at 10 cents jumped one cents Look, it's a bottom line, folks. We're just waiting for this attorney letter. She took a big drop, over 50%. We could expect at least 25% of that to come back, maybe more though. 25% is a good gain. AECX, I know she looks terrible, but she's got an itty bitty, super tiny float and a very easy problem to remedy. So I think it should be an easy gain. As you saw, our due diligence presented us with three different types of chart setups for the stocks we looked at. Bopo had that atypical breakout chart we're always looking for, the dream chart. Then we had DHCC with the continuation, lots of heat, and AECX, bad fall recovery. These are the sort of charts I'm looking for, folks. And they've all got catalysts, so they should move. Be sure to put them on your watch list. Remember folks, looking at the charts can be healthier than looking at the news. Hot news doesn't work so well on a cold chart, but a little catalyst can do wonders on a hot chart. Remember folks, due diligence. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.